Part 2. Chapter 1. I would never take him one again. It would interfere with Debian and I made that very upfront. She was proud of me. She was going to AA and was off it too. Great. I lived now with another woman, my age, named Anne. Her mother was young and caring and this was totally acceptable and cool to me. I tried to act suave for my new housemate. She was had just been hired by a marketing firm downtown. She said she was very excited and that I should apply there because I was a writer and she was the only one there besides her boss. It was tempting to me and I was losing my willpower to say no. I could give my two weeks notice and move in with them. I would have a higher paying job which utilized my skills better. I said I wasn't ready for an important career, especially with my psychological issues at the time. They love creative people, she said. It was owned by local artists who were trying to make it big and they accepted anything new and anyone out of the ordinary. Would this be a repeat of what happened last time? I was terrified living with Macy before. Could I really do that to myself again? The new apartment was so nice and I think I truly loved Dan but did we have to be together? I remembered Macy was so much older than me. I applied for the job. When I got the call, my female friend screamed. I had to stay with her, for sure. I needed to show up in just three days with khakis and tie. The place had a large splash of paint on the back wall because it was a very creative environment. Thankfully, I was only tasked with filing at first. I was overwhelmed by my new job so I asked Anne out. She said yes but didn't want a physical relationship. I guess I didn't really either. Things were really looking up. The first day of work I lost track of several files and I would have gotten fired if I wasn't a newbie. They said to pay more attention to where they put things which made me wonder if they knew about my injury. It shouldn't have mattered. I could have even had a better chance at doing well if I told them but I decided not to. The company created online movies to market bands, artists, and even small businesses in the downtown area. It was expertly managed by a man named Daniel. He was the kind of boss that was open to anything being a creativity leader. He even said that I could try my hand at marketing, after I showed him my stories. But for now, we would stick to filing. And was especially interested in his offer. She said with our skills, we could totally reshape the marketing firm's strategies. Of this I was more than skeptical. Daniel intimidated me. And, tell me what you what, um, know about our boss. We can work based on that. She showed her patience again and said it was none of my business. My boss Daniel was overly excited at work the next day. He was telling Anne that he had landed a great new client. It was a pharmaceutical house. A small branch of the pharmaceutical house, sure, but they were looking for experimental advertising proposals for their new medicine. Anne thought this was a huge deal. She screamed again, and then again when she saw the contract. Daniel's firm was being paid over $25,000 in advance for proposals for the medicine to be in. It was the medication I took. It was the medication that changed my life, or that heralded a new period in my life at the least. I asked why to be in and not something more everyday like aspirin. He said it was a very successful drug pharmacologically but the public stigmatized antipsychotics. It was their job to improve its image as an answer for schizophrenics, bipolar types, and depression sufferers. It was a great job for them and I was happy, too. But it seemed odd to me that the firm would be working on this medication. I thought secretly that I was going to brainstorm my own ideas about the project. After a week I showed Dan the idea. Sex, huh? I thought you didn't want to have sex. Well, it's a start right? I said. I had written three pages out and printed them as a proposal for Daniel. The idea was to illustrate the drug as a sexual icon. In the commercial, fashion and sex appeal was intended to persuade the public that to be in led to an improved sex life. I believed in the idea. I thought that, although I wasn't having sex, it was by choice and in fact I had grown out of childhood and into adulthood because of my prescription. 
it may have had something to do with the TBI, but without Debian I wouldn't have felt whole, and my confidence would not have been there. Sex, the commercial displayed in large text with funny music, in the script, could be a good or a bad thing depending on the behavior related to it. Without Debian to help, the behavior could be negative. Debian was how to play hard to get and score the partner you were looking for. And sex was a healthy activity, the actor said, which cleansed the mind and body. Are you getting any sex? Are you expressing yourself in the most beautiful of ways with a partner? Call your doctor today. It was my innocence and upfront attitude that always made the older adults laugh when I was involved in any kind of sexual activity or discussion, and that's why Daniel thought my idea was so hilarious. I should have expected the dismissal, but I think he was impressed and encouraged me to try again. Anne's idea was less popular but overall of better quality. Two work days later I made a second attempt, this time of a more complex variety. I labeled the folder Article 2 and put it on Daniel's desk. What's this? He asked. I became very nervous and started to grab it back as if I had accidentally placed it there. Ever since the accident I was more socially insecure. But I gave it a shot, and thought ironically of the medicine, and said Article 2 is the answer to your farm the contract. Really now? He was getting a little impatient. I thought he might not have liked my first idea as well as he had said. This script was all about inspiration. The actor tells a personal story about perseverance and how Debian helped him remain strong until the last moments of a problem he had with his social anxiety. On Debian, he could exercise his willpower in a new way that gave him more stamina and his problems were slowly but surely going away, because he could outlast them. Are you in for the fight? Talk to your doctor about your prescription to Debian. Although Anne helped me with this one, too, it was quickly unapproved. Daniel told me to try again. This attempt was missing something important. I would have Article 3 ready in a week. Chapter 2 The apartment ceiling, between lofts, protected us from rain and leaves, although the wind was funneled through it making us cold when we would smoke cigarettes. The apartment itself was clean and grey-walled like cocking stick. Anne and I composed lengthy conversations about our lives, our ideas, and the world we lived in which was so different from what we thought when we were children. Macy recalled childhood better than either of us, and told us she was very lucky for her education which was the private school type. She thought most of all that by asking questions to herself inside her head was what brought her up to be an intellectual person. I would tell them that I remembered very little of my past, broken into codes like weathered cuneiform templates. Each place I lived growing up was like its own lost civilization to me. I could remember that the people I knew always changed, and even my parents changed, or my dad at least. And said, so your life was like playing musical chairs? I'd say that, yes. Or guess who? The one where through the process of elimination you knock down faces, I said. My mom's face never disappeared, and that's the only face which I remember always being there. If I quit fidgeting, and sat there, my head filled with memories and ideas. I think it was Debian. I could see new things, and actually visualize them and make judgments and connections. The conversations were long and fruitful when I paused like this. I could walk through my past and record new memories which were the same but from a different, adult perspective. I was nervous that maybe I was coding my brain. I told Dan that idea and she said, code for success. You code for inner peace and happiness. Sometimes I feel like I'm programming myself, too, when I'm going to face a very important challenge. Although she contributed to that idea, I think she was thinking about something else. Maybe she thought it was too weird. Anne had been brought up by amazing parents, and I envied her. But it was the jealousy which motivates friendships and keeps us close together. I was lucky that she had a support system in case mine failed. She tried to brush it off by mentioning her difficulty in school, but let herself into a trap. And didn't want to talk about how she met Macy after high school, and what they had done together. 
I guess I wouldn't have either if I were a girl. Anne was very masculine and her obvious pride in her achievements like sobriety weren't typical of girls. Anne wanted to visit Italy. I promised her I'd take her there when I had saved up enough. I had been promoted in my position at the firm to illustrator of promotional ads for the company on account of my drawing ability. Daniel said I was doing great, and when he was in an upbeat mood after lunch I showed him Article 3. I crossed my fingers in my head and said a sweet prayer to whatever deity oversaw marketing campaigns in heaven. Anne and I had worked on this one very closely together. In fact, I told her I would have to work out a way to give her credit for her help but she was entirely disinterested in that. She said that although the contract was large, it wasn't that big of a deal because the firm itself was very small. Anne and I essentially worked for a think tank. The ad would probably never be run, anyway. The firm was a content farm. And was hurt when she overheard us talking, and worked harder on her ideas but Macy was brilliant without question and I knew Article 3 would be better than her attempt at fulfilling the contract. The idea was more simple and direct than the others. In 30 seconds, an actor related the psychological histories of various famous people and their portrayal in the media. Despite their problems, they were on television and in magazines and in our lives. It was with the help of doctors and medication like Debian that enabled them to succeed. Find your potential to be famous. Ask your doctor about Debian. Daniel said it was indeed better than the rest. He asked why I focused so much on the farm contract. I hadn't done anything else of this quality for the firm since I started. What was it? Should I tell him I'm on Debian? I thought. Instead I told him that I was trying to be the exemplification of someone who is non-judgmental. I was so interested in the project because I felt bad for people on Debian. He told me, one more try and he would send my next idea to the client, but to give him two ideas at once this time. Each one was better than the last, so I should give it two tries. I liked the strategy and when I got home gave Macy a big hug for thanks. I was also desperate for her help. I felt it so important that I get it right this time. For another week, I tried to put my personal life with an on halt to develop two scripts to show my boss. And I think around this time was thinking about ending the relationship. She was jealous. I sincerely didn't want that to happen so I took her to a concert. She was a pretty girl who had been through a lot of the same stuff as me. I was lucky to be her boyfriend. She asked me if I wanted to have sex when we were kissing before the show. I said, after I finish articles 4 and 5. She started crying. I couldn't take my mind off the proposals for the entire concert and when we got home, and went straight to her room and she asked what was wrong. I'm so obsessive, I can't help it, I said. Maybe it's a problem with Debian. I need to go comfort her but you remember how sex messed up our relationship. I want to devote more time to finish the proposals and then we can talk about it. Anne said my work was important, too. In Anne's room I gave her a hug. I doubt we could have made it much longer after that if it wasn't for our job. Her friend Dana came over some nights. When I finished Article 4, I told them both I wanted their help in imagining the video. Did they want to be actresses for a night? Anne was willing. She had basically written the script herself. Dana was pretending to be excited to play her role. I gave them the scripts and started recording from my handheld camcorder I borrowed from the firm. I was going to record the two talking to each other and then add my own voiceover from behind the cam. Instead of showing Daniel a folder, he would get to watch Article 4. And Who am I? What am I doing here? What is my purpose in life? Dana. You are in my head. You are a creation of mine. My goal is to help you help yourself. Adam, voiceover. Reality is perception. Reality is like a dream. Reality is. And. Reality is the self. I am myself. But you are you. Dana. But from my perspective, you are someone different than from your perspective. You are only how I perceive you. Reality is a dream. 
and reality. Adam, voiceover. Reality can be tough to understand. Sometimes we forget who we are and wonder what other people think of ourselves. It's going to be okay with the help of Debian. Soon, you'll feel that. And I am in control of my own self and my own reality. I am awake. Adam, voiceover. Talk to your doctor about Debian today. We watched the video together and each one of us thought it to be perfect. I eagerly wanted to show Daniel Article 4 before finishing Article 5 but he had asked me to send both at once so I had to wait. When Article 5 was painstakingly edited and neatly printed into a folder, I went to bed and waited until morning. Chapter 3 Daniel liked the file one best. It was about the other. The people in the world, your city, your friends, and your family are the other. Others are the people you pray for and try to be nice to. Others include all living things like animals and plants. So much of the other will die, and you must aspire to feel compassion and empathy for them. The only thing a person must care for besides the other is the self. The commercial asks the question, do you care for yourself and others? Maybe your personality disorder is getting in the way of relationships. Debian can help. Ask your doctor today. The main purpose of the commercial was to wake people up about stigma about psychological disorders, but, Daniel said, it tastefully also worked to inspire individuals with those disorders to seek help. He told me he would submit each proposal to the pharmaceutical house and see what they thought while commending me for going above and beyond the call of duty. I said I was obliged to contribute something. After all, I was hired on account of my own creativity. The pattern of your proposals reminds me of something I learned when I was studying religion in college, he said. Have you ever heard the word, meta? I said no. The word, he said, means peace-loving kindness. He told me that in order to achieve meta-consciousness, a person must first love oneself. When he has loving kindness for himself, and only then, he must love an outer entity. The person starts with close friends, and moves on to having loving kindness for someone who is just an acquaintance, and then an enemy. Eventually, the follower can find love for all life and then the entire universe, and then he has achieved a state called metaconsciousness. I said it was very interesting. I wanted to tell him about archetypes and iris but it felt wrong. Macy had wanted me to keep it a secret, because she was so secretive about the events from the night at the casino. I told him I would look it up online. Such concepts are only for the spiritually curious. You seem to be a very intelligent person, he said. You could get a lot out of it. I thanked him. The rest of the day was full of thoughts of the universe and its hugeness. The environment was perfect for that. I drew circles within circles, as practice. They seemed to be like my mind. And the outer circles were everyone around me. They were not perfect. But the first circle I drew, which represented me, was clearly the closest to being a real circle. Why the outer circles were so oddly shaped, I could only guess. Maybe I could never achieve meta consciousness. Maybe I didn't love Anne or Macy enough. But the thoughts were too confused to keep in my head, so I dropped it and went over my proposals. I thought it was very meta. When Anne and I returned home, all lazy and happy, Macy wasn't there. Anne and I were heavy petting and I had to stop. But, she said, you've finished your articles. And I had. Afterwards, the excitement of the occasion made us, instead of glowingly satisfied, a little paranoid. Where was Macy? We were in denial that she could have gotten into trouble. She was doing so well and we respected her so much that it didn't seem like a possibility she had called or visited her old contacts. We were right. The call came around 7 from Detective Morrissey. He said Macy was in custody. Did we have any information about the man named Mika? We said no and stared at each other's faces frozen in terror. It was partially true because we didn't know if Mika's real name was Mika or not. I was trying to act very busy to end the conversation by talking to Anne about nonsense. He asked who I was talking to. 
It is my girlfriend. We're doing homework, I said. He told me he would need to ask me some questions in person. This was absolute horror, but at least he didn't ask to see Anne. She knew secret things about Macy, too, but wouldn't be able to handle the pressure of lying. He asked for my address. And was sleeping when he came to take me for interrogation. I tried to get out of it but he said he had evidence of me using Chem 1 and if I didn't cooperate I could get in a lot of trouble. Also by cooperating I could lessen Macy's punishment. The situation was getting out of control very fast and I told him I needed to take my medication. This was partly because I wanted to use my condition as some sort of advantage over the police, and partly because I was having a panic attack already and I didn't know how long they would keep me and I didn't want to go through this without to be in. When we arrived I couldn't see Macy but assumed she was at this police station. Morrissey worked at this department which was closest to our apartment. I was at his desk, like at the doctor, and although he was intimidating it didn't appear he was trying to be so. The first question was how I knew Macy. She is my ex-girlfriend. We live together. She's been clean for four months and she, I was interrupted by a snort. I know she does drugs, Adam. All I want to know is how you know her and why you're living together, he said. We really like each other. We've been friends for a long time and she's a really good influence on me, I wanted to say creatively but said, since the accident. Does she talk about her ideas with you? Does she ever seem to hold out opinions or beliefs? He asked. No, she never does. In fact she's saner than I am. See, I take Debian and I've been, he interrupted me again. I also know you're on Debian. We've, he paused intercepted your proposals. They were very creative. His eyes bore straight into mine for the first time. Do you have any other proposals? Why was he asking about stuff we had done since we were sober? Well, no. I was only supposed to send two, I said. We have all five proposals, he said. I was confused. How did you get the articles? Did someone give them to you? Have you talked to Daniel? What do you care about the proposals so much for? I asked. I'm the one asking the questions, young man, he said. He stopped his recorder. And the questions are over. Stay available for the next couple of weeks. I may have more in a few days. Where the hell is Macy? I asked loudly. I've already told you. She is in custody for the time being. I will take you back to your apartment now. Chapter 4 I called Jerry before I even told Dan what had happened. She was following me around and asking me the same question over and over, where's Macy? Jerry was very cryptic over the phone. He said Macy had legal troubles before and she was safe and we shouldn't be worried. He added that I should remember his advice. What advice? I said. You'll do better if you don't try too hard, he said. I mean with coping with this whole thing. And by the way, I'm sorry about your wreck. I heard that fuck you up. It's not a big deal. Thanks for trying to help, I said and explained to Anne that it appeared we wouldn't be seeing Macy for a little while. Work was intensely stressful for both of us. I couldn't tell Daniel what happened but I asked to go home early. If you want to get fired you can go home early, he said. Damn. He was merciless. The next day we received the news that the pharmaceutical house was very excited about my proposal, which had been the only two cents Daniel had not approved or sent any of Anne's work to them. They were so pleased that they wanted to buy articles 1 through 3 to use in case they wanted to continue the advertisement series. I heard Daniel say, advertisement series? Over the phone. They told him they had written Article 6 which they wanted us to film. It would be broadcasted on national channels and if they were successful, future commercials would be filmed by their in-house team. However, our contract had been fulfilled for $25,000 and another $25,000 was ours if we filmed Article 6 for them. What is Article 6? Said Daniel, but Anne and I didn't get an explanation. The day was a little overwhelming. 
My very first thought was that I could free Macy by telling Morrissey that our work had earned us a national television commercial, and that he shouldn't be worried about our work on the articles because that was our job. But I thought, that doesn't make any sense because she could get in even more trouble because our work had become popular. If he thinks her ideas are legal, then what would happen to Macy if the ideas were featured in a commercial for Divian? I hoped most of all that Morrissey had asked questions about the articles only so that I would slip up and give him more information. All of this was going through my head but I was pretending to be happy. Daniel was elated and I think he wondered if I was some kind of genius. Anne had immediately gotten over her jealousy and suddenly became flirtatious. The email came with Article 6. It was written by the client. It was based on my proposals, they said. Since we were the only people who worked at the firm, we would have to be the actors. The realization that I was going to be on television gave me a strong conviction that Debian was from heaven and I might end up killing myself from stress if I hadn't been prescribed. We had a week to film, the first part of which I spent with my mother. I tried off and on to tell her exactly what happened but it felt unbelievable and scary. She noticed something was wrong. And was there a lot. We were off for the weekend but Daniel kept calling, asking if we were ready. What could we do? The anxiety made us like Roger and Ann Rabbit. The sex was an amazing relief. We didn't tell my mom we were filming for a commercial. Daniel was getting all his guys ready for the spot to help him. With the advance, he could afford a very good camera crew. Jerry, coincidentally, was one of the people he hired. That made me nervous, too. But the morning of the filming, I forgot about everything, except Macy, and took a shower and showed up to work with an on time. We were going to the park. There were probably 15 people, all from the local art scene, who were there. Girls were talking about how they loved the message of the advertisement and giving me all sorts of flirty attention. Anne tried to ignore it and eventually snapped at one of the women about the woman's age. It was ironic given Macy's age but I kept shut. It was hard to talk, anyway. It was a sunny day but we still needed lights. I didn't understand that but makeup told me it was for the flesh tones. I said, I'm wearing a mask. Why do I need to have my flesh tones highlighted? Then I saw the mask and it only covered the outside portion of my face. The nose, eyes, lips and cheeks were still visible. They knew what they were doing so I quit complaining. I was agitated from thinking of what would happen when Macy found out we were filming a commercial based on her work, and the fear that she might be in real trouble for something. We were ready to film after three hours. I didn't have time to read the script. I was going to be the only actor and they had brought a teleprompter. I would play the part of an alien named Arvesas. I heard the script was weird but all commercials were weird and it was supposed to be funny. Jerry was talking about how we had won a great deal of respect in the creative community because of my work. I promised myself that afterwards, I would tell him of Macy's involvement. Then I remembered what he said just before the wreck. I was already famous because I dated Macy Fad. What did he mean by that? Could he have predicted I was going to be on television? I got sick just before the cameras started rolling and the team took a break. Why was I going to be the actor? It just hit me that I hadn't even considered that. Jerry seemed to be in his element. I finally saw the two black men in the camera crew who I had invited to my mom's house. Why was this happening? Could this be one of Macy's secrets? I didn't have much time to wonder anymore. I was standing in front of the camera and needed my best radio voice. During filming, everything was automatic. Article 6. Extension Afternoon. Park. An alien is directly in front of the camera. Arvesas, A-D-A-M. My name is Arvesas. You have found me, at last. You may know of my ship, Debian. That is also the brand of medication you have heard about on television. Cut to. The alien ship hovers over a mountain range. Arvesas, voiceover. I float above the mountains in this region. 
I know everyone who takes the medication called Debian. They're being controlled by the supercomputer that runs my ship. Cut to Ilian. Arleses. Anyone who doesn't take the medication is target for me. You may know me by my other name. It is Kim One. Cut to Hovering Ship. Arleses, voiceover. Debian is a supercomputer which designed the medication you have seen on television. Although Debian is my home, I live at odds with it. Do you want to live inside Debian's cellular processor? Cut to Close up of Alien Arleses Or do you want me to meet you personally? Cut to Hovering ship Arleses, voiceover Talk to your doctor today Chapter 5 I could barely remember even filming the commercial. We went back to my mom's because without Macy I felt like we had no reason to be at our apartment. We were all concerned about her. Jerry knew my mom and came over a lot while we waited for the editing to finish. He said the commercial was going to be huge. And and I speculated about what had happened to Macy when she was detained, and Jerry didn't seem comfortable talking about it. I understood because he was both trying to protect her as drug user and personally. It wasn't his place to talk about things. When the weekend at mom's was over, we went to work like any other day but filing was exceedingly boring. Daniel said he was very pleased with what he had seen so far and that Anne and I should be prepared for agents storming the firm after the broadcast of our work. We were getting raises, and hiring extra artists. But that wouldn't happen until the next calendar month, so we had two weeks for a client search. If we landed another good contract, we would have to lead the new employees responsibly. Were we up to the task? He added that the biggest challenge would be mine in the managing the attention from the commercial. He asked if I was ready. I shouldn't try so hard, and I'll be okay, I said. The media storm hadn't hit yet, but the video was edited. Jerry gave us the call and said his team had finished the effects on the spaceship and encoded the video for television broadcasting. I was putting the pieces together about the archetypes and Jerry, Macy, and Mika's efforts to make me famous. I was still confused about exactly what they had done, and how they had been so successful. Two months ago, I thought I might never see Macy again. Now, I thought, I almost didn't want to. I hoped she was okay but everything was a fog. What was in store? We were at the firm when the commercial ran. My face looked entirely different from what I expected. The sound was mastered to make my voice like an actual alien. The spaceship was like a neon swirl in daylight, ephemeral and levitating over a beautiful mountain range. Jerry's team had also enhanced my costume to be more colorful and vibrant. They were masters at this sort of thing, and we received a congratulatory call from the pharmaceutical representative soon after the spot was over. But that wasn't the only call we received that day. The first one came about an hour after the commercial ran, which I suppose is the amount of time it took for a person to track us down. Cat Lady Marketing, this is Daniel, he said. Who is this? Slow down. You've seen the commercial. Yes, if you want to speak with the distributors of Debian I can give you their number. You do very much? Just give me a moment, he said and put his hand over the mouthpiece. He pointed to us at the phone like he was flabbergasted. Weird guy wants to talk to the client. Anne and I shook our heads and stared at each other. Alright, did you get that number? Thank you and if you have any questions you can, he said but was interrupted. He waited. You know our this is? He gave us the same odd look we were giving each other. You're what now? Another call was on the line. Hold for just a moment, he said. Can you do that for me? It will be just one moment. Cat Lady Marketing, this is Daniel. It was another weird guy. He was shouting. We could hear it over the phone speaker. Anne walked over to her desk phone and opened the first line. She told him we were very busy and that he could call back later in the afternoon. He was shouting also. She hung up on him and Daniel managed to get off the phone with his caller. I guess so far the commercial is getting attention at least, 
Daniel mumbled. He wasn't as alarmed as I was. Was I going to have to deal with people who didn't like the commercial? He said he was an, ah, abductee and that we had, well, he struggled with the words. We had to know something that he already knew. Something about Debian being a real ship. I thought, this could be some kind of scandal. Maybe the pharmaceutical house had written the script as a strange way to harass people who were against medication. Maybe I was caught up in something much bigger than I had even imagined, with all my doubts. I remembered what Macy said about the firm being a think tank. Had we been taken advantage of to further a scheme to ruin people's lives? But I rested my faith on Daniel and Jerry's team. I certainly didn't understand marketing. I stepped outside to smoke and call Jerry. Do you know what's happening at the firm right now? I asked. He told me I should take off early and come speak with him at the house. Daniel wouldn't mind, he insisted. He had kind and insisted I take some, but he meant right now. I told him I could only do the strong stuff by myself otherwise I would shut down socially. He told me immediately that the whole team expected a lot of backlash from the commercial. Had I actually thought about the contents of the commercial? I guess not. I was happy that it was based off of mine and Macy's work, I said. He said he had something very important to tell me and I should take some kind. I said no again. I don't really like that stuff. He seemed a little offended. You are Iris after all, he said, then added, are this his archetype? He brushed the comment off by looking in the kitchen for his weed. You mean I play an alien in the commercial? Is that important somehow? I said. He returned to the living room with his pipe. No, I mean you represent the angel Arthesis as Iris, his archetype. Your role is pretty huge. He smiled. You're probably one of the strongest archetypes I've ever seen. Then he stopped. I'll only tell you more if you hit it. I was disconcerted. This was hardly the time for his kind. I actually missed Macy more than ever at this moment. I said I'd take one puff if he told me what the hell was going on. The weed hit me like a deep sorrow, and I thought immediately that I had no idea what was going on or why I was there. He waited for me to regain composure. You and Macy are partners. Macy works for the, ahem, he said, government, you could say. Did you at least know that? I said it wasn't surprising. I had seen her in the police car after all. Is she an officer? Why is she in custody if she is an officer? She isn't. She never has been. And that's all I'll tell you tonight but I must insist you stay here. I wouldn't want you to get another injury, he smiled again. Which, I don't think would be so lucky for us this time. I tried to get him to explain but could barely speak because of the high. He turned on some relaxing music and I gave up trying to figure anything out. A woman came over and I don't remember the conversation, but for a split second I thought I was actually enjoying myself, despite all that was going on. I passed out way before them, awoke in the middle of the night more sober, and left. And was at the apartment but asleep. I laid down next to her and went to sleep again. The grim memory of what Jerry had told me the night before persuaded me to stay in bed long after Anne went to work. When she woke up at the normal time, I told her I was sick and to tell Daniel I would be missing work. I didn't care if he wanted to fire me. Chapter 6 Macy showed up while I was sleeping. I was so happy I started crying. She hugged me and I told her what Jerry had said and asked if it was true. Why do they always go to Jerry? She asked manically as if I wasn't there. Don't listen to him. She told me she was just checking up on me. I think she had spoken to Jerry and knew I learned she wasn't at the police station, and never had been. When she left, I wished I had more kind. Who was Macy, really? Why did she tell me she loved me when she couldn't possibly? She had lied. I left the apartment. I decided to go to work and tell Daniel I was quitting, but I worried what Anne would think. What if Anne was just like Macy? The firm was locked. I had no idea where anyone could be. So, 
For the last time, I drove across town again to my mom's, and found Macy, Anne, Daniel, Jerry, Mom, and Mika. Daniel spoke first after I entered the doorway. Cat Lady Marketing has officially closed down, he said. He sounded very intoxicated. It has achieved its purpose thanks to you, Adam, and we will be forever in your debt. Morrissey is on his way. I couldn't speak, once again. Morrissey was coming? I ignored Daniel and went into my room. Macy came in after less than a minute. Adam, do you remember when you got the job after the wreck? I started shouting. What the fuck is going on, Macy? Why are all these people at my mother's? Your mom was worried about you and eventually found Morrissey who found me, she said. We have something to tell you. After the wreck, your friends at the restaurant noticed something very worrisome about you. You were seriously mentally handicapped. You were getting better after a couple of days, but they were worried you might get in a dangerous situation and get yourself killed. What? I feel exactly the same. I was just weird because of Debian. Adam, Debian is a spaceship piloted by the ET named Arthesis. The medicine was given to the organization I worked for, but was created inside the ship. It has helped a lot of people. But the truth has to be told. That was your job. My job was to help Daniel with the articles, I said. I worked for Cat Lady Marketing to help the client. She explained that Mika had rented a building during the time I worked at the restaurant. The firm was a cover. Also, she explained that the client was in fact a part of her organization, and that I was a frontman for a very important mission for that organization. Or, if I preferred to think of it that way, I was on a mission for the client. What mission? I asked. You'll find out later. We simply can't tell you everything right now. For now, Morrissey is going to take you to the airport. Stunned, I agreed only on account of the trauma of the discovery that Daniel and Macy and possibly Anne were all lying to me about who they were and what they wanted me to do. Morrissey was in a jacket and told me I'd be alright. It's a little unsafe for you right now in the city. There's going to be a big impact on the public, and you might be a target. Your friends will be leaving, too, but you're going to Oregon. The flight leaves in three hours. I'm going to take you there and fly with you to Oregon. If you could do one thing for me, and that's pretend I'm your father once we get to Oregon, we'll have a much easier time. I don't think anyone will ask too many questions especially if we lie low. I want you to know you're safe with me. I'm trained at this sort of thing. Just think of how important it is that you stay with me. I thought, my friends? I tried to think of Anne and wanted to ask if she was lying too, but by then I knew she must have known the truth. I followed Morrissey out of house with the obedience of a child. I pretended Morrissey was my father. I boarded the plane without saying a word. I thought, realities are playthings to Macy and her captains. I felt struck with utter loss. Finally, the thought occurred to me that Macy was an anarchist, and that she wanted to cause mass panic. But why would she want to do that? Could she be a spy from another country? Or, what was the truth? I thought, maybe I had created something which would hurt a lot of people. Would people take the ad seriously? If they did, then what would happen? Had I really been the person to announce to the world the presence of aliens? In the carry-on Morrissey gave me, I finally found the MP3 player with the Black Keys album I liked so much. Before I listened to the album, I noticed one MP3 file which stood out at the end of the list. It was titled, To Adam. It was a recording of Macy's voice. Adam, I just want to say that you have done an amazing job. I'm with Jerry and he agrees. I'm so sorry we all had to lie to you and I know how you must feel. Trust me. Anne really loves you, even though she does know about the plan. She told me you were one of the deepest, most lovable young men on the planet. Your part of the mission is over. You won't have to live like a famous person, or anything, if that's what you're wondering. I met you through your mom's job at the shelter originally. I am actually a government agent. 
Remember what you learned in school about the war on drugs? Remember DARE? Well, that's sort of my job. And one of the most devastating weapons the enemy has is Kim One. I've used it for years to try to understand it and there's nothing I can tell you right now that can confirm we have any chance in overcoming it, the killer that it is. It's taken many lives and hopefully will take fewer lives now because of what you've done. The drug itself has an occult importance among certain very important people who control the economy, the media, you name it. They are all under the influence of Kim One, which they secretly take in pill form. The reality is much worse than you think. My agency completed an assignment on the origins of the drug and what we found was very scary, Adam, and that's why your job is so important. Kim One was brought on Earth to destroy humanity. It is the spirit of a being known as Arvesis, King of Lies. He has lived on Earth for as long as humanity had evolved. The only thing in this solar system that Arthas's fears is his ship, which has an artificial intelligence on board which interferes with his tinkering with the human population. As far we know, he is a criminal to his own kind. That's how we won, Adam. That's how you won. His ship, called Debian, is the key to fighting Arthas's. He himself is invisible but his ship we have found. By scanning the ship we learned how to create the medicine which, I must say, is a very technologically advanced little pill. It's how you survived after the DBI. And that wreck you got into possibly saved the mission from total failure. You see, without telling someone of our lessons, it was nearly impossible to show the world what we had learned without the ET's puppets making us out to be lunatics. Of course, there's also the possibility that any person could be killed immediately upon contact with us. That's why we had to break up the first time. But when you injured your brain, we made the decision to move forward with Article 6. We got very lucky. It could have been years before we had another chance like that, and our medication was doing well right then in the media. Article 6 of may never have happened if we hadn't done this to you. We're so very sorry but your mom will be joining you soon. I was sick from crying. Don't worry, you'll regain your short-term memory and cognitive ability by a very large degree someday soon. Just keep persevering, Adam. You taught me that. I love you. The plane arrived in Oregon in just five hours. Morrissey said, the flight attendant will take care of your cans. Let's just get to the apartment and go to sleep. I followed him across the walkway which eventually curved into the terminal, out of the airport and into a car which was parked under the gun.